Hey everyone, it's Panda T here and welcome to a game called Car Hazard. So I watched a little bit of gameplay on it and apparently you're just like a random person who is letting people get in the car with you and having conversation with them. I mean, it doesn't seem that dangerous or anything like that. So let's get right on to it. I'm broke, same. Broke, same. No, not good enough. Too blunt. Granny, I found a new project that I'm what? But I need your help to wait. No, that's way too bad. As I turn off the engine, I'm wondering how to ask Grandma for help. This lady is getting old, and so is her help. It's only a matter of months, if not weeks, before she passes away, and no one is spending enough time with her. I feel like the only reason we're coming to speak to grandma is because we also just want to maybe see that inheritance a little bit. Uncle Mike is, well, a moron who only thinks about his newly lovey-dovey wife. Sounds like we're a little bit bitter. Mom has left the country with a young and handsome man called Giorgio, a typical Italian. Again, it sounds like we're just bitter. Jimmy is Jimmy. Focus on his career. Sophie's just thinking about the inheritance and anyway, are we Sophie? Is that what is happening here? I've decided to join Granny for a few days. I can't imagine how lonely she must be. Though, I've a tiny, mini, shorty problem. I'm kind of broke. It meant I couldn't afford a plane ticket. Now I've got to ride over 500 miles with my gel bunny, okay, nobody cares, into my name. Because I mean, I seem like the type who's gonna pick up hitchhikers. Let's see who's about to share my journey. Auntie Gigi, she is 65, retired, interest, death metal, and $30, and, well, 30, what is that? 30 manis, and homemade pie. I mean, She's an old lady. I feel like that's famous last words. Anyway, an old woman with a blue pullover sits in the back seat. She has the sweetest smile ever. She only has one, ba one bag and seems to be extremely joyful. She even reminds me of Granny. Her rosy cheeks are similar and they both have the same caring look. I suddenly notice the name written on her show. Iron Maiden. I chuckle. That ride will certainly be memorable. This old lady is about to murder me. I don't know. Okay, introduce myself. Hello, I'm Panda T. To whom do I have the pleasure? The granny turns towards me. She winks to the rear view mirror and exclaims, I'm Glorianne, but everyone calls me Gigi. A pleasure. May I say that I love Iron Maiden? Then you must have great taste. You're definitely someone of quality. I kind of just want those cookies or whatever the baked goods is. Like, I don't care about the 30 manis. Like the biscuits is what we're after. We share a smile as the old lady relaxes in the back of the car. She's obviously tired and out of breath. She must have ran to get here on time. And I find it quite nice of her. I've always had a thing for old people. So I'm broke. I want a sugar daddy. I'm, I'm clearly bitter that everyone else is having relationships and I'm not. This person is me. Wow. I'm kidding about the sugar daddy. <laughs> they can be a real pain in the ass, but sometimes they're real angels. Like kids when I think of it. What's your favorite band? What's your favorite band? The famous ones like some 41 Metallica or the less mainstream ones like Megadeth. Megadeth. Or dope. Gigi coyly smiles and gestures to me. It seems that you are well informed. For once, you didn't mention rains. Let's say I'm open minded and I enjoy different types of music. So, young girl, where are you heading? Maybe I should give them voices. Okay. I've work to do, a project to finish at my granny's place. Unfortunately, my wallet isn't as full as it used to be, and I don't mind meeting new people. So, car sharing is the best option. 
Yes, it's quite hard these days. What kind? <coughs> Never mind. What kind of project? I hesitate for a brief instant. I'm a freelance artist. I play with various types of materials to create avant avant-garde sculptures and paintings. It's been my passion since a young age and one day, okay, cool. The young, the old woman nods. <laughs> the old woman kindly nods. I can't hear the station, mom. Can you turn the volume up? I respect her wish. Instantly, the lyrics of the song resonate and collide with their aggressive, aggressive, what? Aggressive, the wind is aggressive. Why couldn't we have just said that? Music gives rhythm to our journey, our voices and our mood. Gigi and I are finally getting along, but we both know that it's just a way to pass the time. At some point, the elderly looks for something in her bag and hands me a couple of appealing and mouth-watering cookies. We're in. Of course I will accept them. Thanks, that's really nice of you. Wait, she is a stranger. I don't think twice and grab a portion of two cookies. I put them into my mouth and start chewing. With, with what? I think it looks like a satisfied grin. Gigi is appreciative of my enthusiasm as she is smiling with her deep brown eyes. It has a particular, a particular, yes, <laughs> taste, but it's yummy. Oh, I for, ah, uh, I forgot to tell you something. There's a secret ingredient. Can you guess it? In my entire life, I had never said no to a challenge, but I was sure it wouldn't happen. And I was sure it wouldn't happen today, especially when I'm dealing with food. And she likes food. Okay. Cinnamon? Well, that's correct, young lady, although I'm talking about something else. What then? Mar <laughs> I'm driving. And this old lady will give me space cookies. I immediately spit the rest of my second bite in the direction of the windshield. What? Seriously? That was unexpected. Really unexpected. Totally unexpected. And to be honest, Pandity, just one bite is enough to feel high. Holy! I cough to eliminate the last pieces of cookies, but it seems to be completely useless. Gigi bursts into laughter and she's holding her baby as her giggles are uncontrolled. This old lady's crazy. She was eating these cookies. I should have known. Look at that. Look at those cookies. I should have known. In fact, I've already taken one or two <laughs> before the ride. Of course she had unicorns. I see unicorns with blue heads, purple tails, human teeth. They're all cheerfully dancing around the car in a perfect circle. Is she short with marijuana? I don't know. I'm speaking like I, I'm out here smoke weed every day. I don't know. Like, but this does not sound like just marijuana. Okay, I wave repeatedly at them, but they don't seem to notice me. I'm invisible. Yeah, it must be so. I've always dreamt of being invisible. I stick my tongue out. I wonder. I space I'm driving. <sighs> what would it feel like to be a unicorn? What kind of life would I have? Would I be in the right shoes? Would I truly like who I am and the people around me? No granny to take care of. No Shirley family and no worries about unemployment for being avant-garde and ununderstood. Wouldn't it ooh, wouldn't it be nice, right? But then I can hear a croaky and tired voice. Whoa, look out, it's a giraffe! I try to turn around. What? to have a glimpse of who's talking, but all I'm able to see is the right <laughs> I made it for <laughs> what appeared to be an hour. I probably placed myself behind the wheel. 
I most probably read that completely wrong. Wow. By the time I noticed the huge giraffe at the end of the road, I collide with a rough, firm, and indestructible body. The impact is sudden, vivid, unsettling. It happens in a flash of blinding light. Numbness takes over. An intense void replaces the land. Obscurity invades every aspect of my life for good. The strange old voice exclaims, Told ya, I don't know why, but all the driver whom, what? With whom I hit the road die in a car crash. It might be because of the cookies. Thank God I'm used to it. <laughs> used to that. I was a stunt woman. Might be why. God, we shouldn't have hit the poor giraffe. Poor, poor thing. Animals should be respected. Hope you're vegan. Like, this old, okay. Though my eyes can barely see a thing, I finally understand that the giraffe is no animal but a truck. The collision has bent the tree in a sonic boom. A hot and undefined, what? Unidentified liquid starts to run down my temples. It doesn't take me long to analyze it. Blood. She. I vainly attempt to move my arms. My brain and my body have been disconnected for good. So. Fate reveals itself to me. Darkness awaits me. Has always awaited for my arrival. There is no heading back. My ho Am I dead? Did I lose the game? Maybe. My whole body is broken. And for some reason, the old lady who has been traveling alongside me is safe as a... Maybe she's dead. Maybe that 65-year-old lady has been dead. We just picked up a marijuana mushroom. Maybe crack as well. Having ghosts. With cookies. I was... <laughs> I was tempted by, by cookies, guys. <laughs> and if that isn't the most realistic outcome ever, if I had chosen a way to die, I would have, I would have to do everything, everything in my power to avoid dying because of a fake giraffe that was in fact a truck due to the fact that a sweet lady had given me marijuana cookies. No one will know, although I should seriously enter in the Darwin Award. Wow, you had it coming. <laughs> they had it coming. Ch -ch you had it coming. Ch -ch he only had himself to blame. Okay, well, let's see if maybe we can survive our trip. Um, Panda tea again. Let's see. Wow, a footnote. You know what? Did I get money? Did I get. I didn't get paid because I died. Okay, so this is a raccoon. Um, he's a food tester. He likes One Republic and Imagine Drive. 45! Okay, guys, we have to. We have to survive. Suddenly, the coolest recruit ever gets in my car and said, what is this knife? Oh. <laughs> he nods in my direction to say hi, but doesn't wear off his sunglasses. He shows a prick. He smiles at me. Then, his smooth voice catches me out of guard. Hi. Name's Merlin. Lady, can I put my backpack in your trunk? I'm just going to politely declare. Please don't. The trunk is full of junk and I highly doubt that you'll manage to put anything in there. I wink. The raccoon seems a bit disappointed, but a grin appears on his lips. He takes a cigarette packet and responds, I guess I'll keep my stuff with me then. Ma'am, you should travel more lightly next time. I flash a tensed rictus. What is that? I wasn't planning to meet a raccoon with a backpack today. And there's plenty of room in the back seat. Fair enough, I won't argue. Do you mind if I lit my cigarette? If I do, yes, totally. But would I say no to him? Absolutely not. 
I was being a jackass, so he would stop thinking about putting his luggage into my trunk. So I could try to be nice for once. Yep, but please open the window. The raccoon obeys and coolly. Are we not gonna address the fact that this is a raccoon? And like, I'm just chilling here driving a raccoon. Where's he even going? How does he have $45? What food is he tasting? Is this a thing of like animal testing? Like, but why is he smoking? What is this? Anyway, blows out the smoke of the car as if he was in a French movie starring Belmond. If I was in the mood to imagine things, I could clearly hear the melancholic soundtrack in harmony with his moves. I've known worse company than Merlin. He is as promising as his name is unique. He has been here and there from Japan to Italy. He has seen monuments like the Eiffel Tower and the Taj Mahal. He has met the cream de la, the creme de la creme and was the person that would end up at the right place at the right time. But exceptions happened and Merlin was ditched in the middle of nowhere thanks to a fascinating woman who had dumped him without anyone around to help him. So car share was the solution to get to the nearest city in record time. You know what, maybe that's why I died in the last situation. Maybe because I'm busy speeding instead of focusing on the road. Where are we going? Oh. <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, I'm, you see, I'm scared, guys. I'm not even going to lie to you. I feel like I'm going to make him mad and then he's going to murder me or something. I'm just going to say the half truth. I'm about to see my granny to take care of her. You're definitely a good woman then. Carrie, I think that's the most important thing in life. I tried to look in his direction, but the tear rolling down his cheek. Shame. Just drop me at the next hotel, you'll see. I'll stay for a night and call my friends. I need them. I should have never left them alone. The, what? I should have never left them alone on this earth. They don't deserve this. Do you have close friends, Panda T? Suddenly, I suddenly freeze. My joints get stiff. I can barely move my hands on the wheel. My heart pounds wildly. I wasn't expecting that. What? Oh, okay. Memories get back. Confused, happy, cheerful, eerie ones. I used to. Merlin has taken away my cheerful mood. Wow, we should just dump him right here. Friend is a forbidden word. Friends are something I would like to forget forever as friends weren't able to understand. Friends weren't there. And friends weren't re what? receptives. So... Now, tell me the truth. What's in your trunk? Should I freak out or go berserk? I have a knife. Maybe I'll stab him. Not that I'm violent. I'm gonna go berserk. Shut up. Oh my goodness. Merlin's <laughs> eyes open wide. What? He doesn't have time to get a response as I abruptly stop on the side of the road. I turn around and look him in the eye. My face must be horrifying. I can't control my appearance when I'm really annoyed. I get close to the raccoon and tie his seatbelt. And you, why is the board so big? You're bothering me. Stop messing around. Stop being such a nosy guy and get out of my damn car. Wow. <laughs> Calm down, girl. I didn't do anything. You, didn't you hear me? I giggle with what I'm I'm crazy. I'm officially crazy. I giggle with what must be an aloof smirk. The raccoon doesn't think twice. He takes his bag, runs with his tail between his legs. It's only when he what? When he is far away that I turn the keys and drive. I'm a sensitive girl. And most of all, I hate people who meddle in things that are none of their business. Now, let's go to Granny's. Oh my god, but I earned some money! I didn't earn my whole money, but I got some money. Okay, let's do one more. 50! His name is Bob. He's a comedy actor. He's talking like talking energy. Okay, I'm gonna accept. A nice and fluffy teddy bear sits on the back seat. He has a happy smile, an adorable face, and a stylish bow tie. I feel quite soothed 
I could have accepted as of a much more stranger passenger. Pretend you've recognized him. Stay focused on the road. He likes to talk, so maybe I should let him talk so that we can get to the destination and get that whole 50 bucks. Pretend I recognize him. You, you look kind of familiar. <gasps> yes, yes, I'm an actor. It must have been while I was in that comedy show about a fairyland in which there was, what? In which there is a war between aliens and unicorns. Hopefully the unicorns win. Is it the same unicorns that were circling around my car? Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to spoil the end. That's okay, it seems like a throw. My name's Panda T. So, you're Bob, right? Bob indeed, nice to meet you, Panda T. To be honest, the director, oh my goodness, the director of Far Away was a jerk. I hate to say rude things, except when it's true. And that's true. But don't say it to a journalist, please. You don't have a recorder there, Panda T. Don't worry, I'm a simple girl with a simple car. The most important part is that you've got paid. But you really look like someone else. Must be my cousin Ted. <laughs> He's not a kindly cutie. What? A kindly, kindly. He's not a kindly cutie there. Family meetings are unpredictable with him. Not the funniest of us. I try to hide my enthusiasm. I would literally pay to see a teddy bear, a teddy family reunion, if I had money of course, which I don't. A few miles have passed and the bear doesn't stop blabbering. In only 50 minutes I know everything about the movie industry. Uh, that seems very shady. Why do you need a hitchhike? <coughs> Bob said, oh my god I'm gonna get stabbed. Bob suddenly holds his tongue. He sighs after a few seconds of silence. I can't drive because I'm a cute teddy. My foot can't touch the pedals, so I'm stuck with other people. Plus, I don't want to disturb my friends for a mere ride. I can understand. At least you have friends to ask for. Oh my goodness, the friends thing. You know what happened? Poor Merlin asked us about friends and we almost went insane. So the bear stares at me, quite startled. He shows an apologetic smile and he looks like he doesn't want to know <laughs> want to know my job. <laughs> That's when he was like, oh, yeah. After the end of his call, my passenger is now playing on his phone. He seems to be concerned. But I don't really mind. However, should I talk to him or not? No. The toy has finally shut up. <laughs> I enjoy my peace my own peace of mind as I get close to the next stop. The bear seems happy, but his score on Flammy Bird is lame. Oh, did you hear about the Italian chef that died? What Italian sh He passed away. <laughs> Finally, it is in that moment I realized that Bob was actually fine. You're lying! You know what? I think I can get 50 for this. So if I had to laugh at that joke, so be it. Spontaneously, I turn towards my client. I'm parked outside of the hotel parking lot and ready to drop bubbles. We've arrived. It was a real pleasure. I'll eagerly look for what? Look for your next movie. Thanks. You're an awesome driver. Bob gets out the car and walks happily. In fact, the teddy is really nice. Now, Let's see who else is about to share my... Oh my goodness. I won't kill you. <laughs> He's not even going to give me money. He just promised he won't kill me. Okay, you know what? I'm going to end it there. Um, Maybe I'll come back to this. I want to see this, the different endings. I also want to see if I can maybe have a different ending with that old lady. Maybe that's why I'm meeting the Grim Reaper now. Anyway, if it is your first time here, make sure to subscribe. Leave me a like a comment if you want to and hit that notification bell so you know when I'll be back but until the next episode that's all from me bye